It's that freedom that the Industrial Revolution created, the wealth that it created that made the middle class possible. And it took, it got rid of the kind of poverty that you don't find in the United States today. But if you travel to Cambodia and if you travel to Africa, that's how everybody lived once upon a time. What got us out of that and what's getting them out of it today to the extent that it's allowed is freedom, is capitalism, is leaving people alone to pursue their values and to build that kind of wealth. It's an interesting history, but it leaves out a huge portion of it. Uh, the, I don't, I don't quarrel with the notion that the Industrial Revolution create and the, and the development of machinery and the development of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of manufacturing created great wealth. It also created great misery. If you read any of the histories of, the, of, the, of England in the 1830s and the 1840s, uh, an urban proletariat was created as opposed to a, a, a rural serf uh, population that was miserable, that was sick. That had short, that had uh, uh, very short lifespans. That had all kinds of uh, of social dysfunction. And it was only when the cap, when the when the, the the dynamism of capitalism was harnessed and managed and restrained, whether it was by labor unions or by child labor laws. I have an interesting quote that I found that from the president of the American Bar Association uh, in the early 1900s, denounced child labor laws as a communistic effort to nationalize children. Uh, I suppose you could take the, the Aron's argument and say, since everyone is in control of their life, if a seven-year-old child wants to go to work in a factory and work 16 hours and be paid pennies, that's his or her right to do. No, I don't believe it. It's exploitation, and it is the responsibility of government and other people to intervene so it doesn't happen.